Hello, this is Kyle, also known as Alien Tube. Today, reviewing this Ronin Katana Euro Longsword number 15. Now, this is going to be a bit more of an informal review than my normal ones. I have had Combat Con recently, and then life in general has been very hectic recently, so I just haven't had quite as much time as I would like to do all the time-consuming parts of a review of the photography. I know I'm not going to have a whole lot of time for video editing, things like that. So it's going to be, like I said, a little bit less formal, a little bit more rambly. I hope that doesn't bother you. Let me know what your thoughts on this format. Who knows, maybe some people will even like it more than my normal reviews. So this sword sells new for $285 from the Ronin Katana brand. You can find it on Cult of Athena, Sword Buyer's Guide, or Ronin Katana's website, probably some other places as well. All of those have it at $285, although Cult of Athena does not have it in stock at the time. When This sword is one of Ronin Katana's newest models. It came out along with one other sword about six months ago, somewhere around there. I don't remember the exact amount. And from what I could tell, this sword and the other one that they brought out at the same time was an arming sword. They share the exact same blade. From what I could tell, the pictures and Cult of Athena's measurements it really did indicate they were the exact same blade. The, that, the other one was an arming sword. This is more of a hand and a half into longsword territory. Now, I decided to buy this one because I liked the overall look of it, and I didn't want to buy the arming sword. I'm not going to go deep into this, but that arming sword looks like, to me, entirely too close to the Albion Burgundian. In fact, it looks like a direct copy of that. Whether or not that's something that bothers you, that's up to you. For me, it bothers me. That's why I went with buying this one. This has the same blade, the same cross guard, but a different grip, different pommel making it a different sword. So this sword does come with a scabbard. It is wrapped in some kind of imitation leather. This is definitely not real leather. It has this suspension system. I honestly don't remember if it came with a belt. If it did, I probably tossed the belt because Ronin Katana's belts usually feel terrible. It also has a shape on here. I'm not sure if the core of this is wood or some other more modern material but it is definitely has a rigid core in there. And if you, when I look in the mouth, it does look like wood, but it could also be some other material that made to look like wood. The fit here is actually quite nice. There's really no rattle at all. And if I hold it upside down, it doesn't come out. Just a little shake, it does come out. If I swip it, swap it around, little bit of rattle down here this way. I think the fit is a little bit, yeah, the fit's a little bit looser there. So overall, it's a good fit. It's a decent uh, scabbard. You know, you can't really expect a whole lot for sub $300. And this scabbard is fully functional and fine for what the price is. So looking at the sword itself, let's go ahead and I'll still follow my normal format in terms of like how I look over the swords, the order, that kind of thing. Looking at the hilt, we have a very classic wheel pommel with a raised boss on here. The, I believe this is stainless steel. Ronin Katana usually does stainless for their hilt components. And it's good. There's absolutely no hot spots on here at all. It's been chamfered over very, very nicely. There's no uh, dimension to the center boss or the central, central piece here. It could thin out towards the peen like you'll oftentimes see on nicer more expensive long swords, but at this price point, again, it's this kind of thing you oftentimes sacrifice because budget, you know, you have to make cuts somewhere. You can't make a $1,200 sword for $285. So the pommel works very well. It looks nice. It's finished in a nice even satin. There's definitely some grind lines visible and some errant grind lines here and there, but nothing too bad. The peen is round here and is smoothed over pretty well. It looks very cleanly done. I don't see any uh, errant hammer marks, anything like that. Overall, it's a good pommel. If we look at the cross guard, it's relatively straight, has a little bit of flare out towards the quill and tips and some decorative grooves and carvings out here. And there's a lot of dimension to this cross guard. 
in pretty much all areas and everything has been chamfered over very nicely. There is no hot spots here anywhere at all. I feel like I could wrap my finger around the guard and cut with the sword if I wanted to, except for the, for the fact that the sword is very sharp down near the quillins, so I wouldn't want to do that. It's finished in pretty much the exact same manner as the pommel, and it looks really nice. Is that something I can compliment Ronan Quintana on? Well, I can compliment them on the uh, execution of it. It's not their design, though. It really does seem to be a direct copy of the Albion Burgundian. So credit to Peter Johnson for the design, or if he based it specifically on historic sword, which is very, very possible, credit to that person, whoever designed that original cross guard. In any case, I like the way it looks on here. The gap in the blade, or in the cross guard where the blade meets, is not too bad. It's a little bit uh, uneven. One side is definitely larger than the other, but it is not bad at all. If I look in there, I don't really see any like white epoxy or anything like that. So it's seated in the cross guard quite nicely. Looking at the grip, which I think is the most interesting part of the hilt, this is not your typical Ronin Katana Euro Sword hilt off, or grip. Oftentimes they have the worst feeling leather I've ever felt with the worst design shapes, bulbous shapes, just squishy leather, awful grips. This is better than those. This is no leather at all. This is just a cord wrap, which is certainly not uh, what we normally see on European longswords, but it's probably not a historical. I would imagine uh, European people wrapped their grips in whatever they had available. Sure, they probably used leather a lot, but it wasn't going to always be available. So a cord wrap makes sense. What's interesting about this though, is it doesn't really give me that great of a grip. If I, you know, really grip the sword tightly, I can twist it around pretty easily. And what I attribute that to not the cord, the cord has a really nice feel actually. It is completely tight. There's no looseness to the cord at all. But while it is wider than it is thick, the transition to the elliptical, it's flat here for the most part, but it's just, it doesn't have enough nuance to the shape. It, it and it tapers in towards a uh, cylindrical down here, but it just doesn't quite fit in my hand right. These edges could use to be a little bit flatter. If this was a not even fully octagonal or even hexagonal, if it was just a little bit more attention given to making those a little bit flatter, this would slot into my hand very well and work very well. But as it is, I don't have a great grip on this sword. It's not terrible. I don't feel like I'm losing control of it, but I never feel like I have it like it's locked in my hands and it's not going anywhere. Now, the, like I said, the cord is actually very tight and very nicely done, but it's also, a, the transitions here are not particularly great. It bulges out over the cross guard a little bit in pretty much all spots, a little bit more on this side and the same on the pommel, except it's a little bit more on this side here. These are very minor complaints here. The, the fact that the grip is not particularly secure in my hand, that is the biggest complaint. These little niggling things about the cord wrap not transitioning to the hill furniture, a pretty minor detail, but it is there. Now, I don't think this is a wood core grip either. I saw somebody post on the SVG forum that they disassembled one of these new ones and it was not wood. So. It, that's not a big deal. It would be nice if it was wood, but again, corners do end up being cut on budget swords. Now, taking a look at the blade, I'm going to give you some very basic measurements. It is 30, a little under 32 inches long. The sword weighs in at two pounds, 12 and a half ounces. It is, I didn't actually measure the point of balance, but you can see it's balanced pretty close to the guard. That looks like about two and a half to three inches. I'd say more closer to two and a half inches. And I did very quick and dirty distal taper measurements. It starts at six millimeters thick at the 
cross guard about halfway up. It's only tapered about half a millimeter. Up here, it's down to about four millimeters. And right out near the tip, it's around three and a half. So that's not a lot of distal taper. It gets away with not having a ton of distal taper because it's a shorter blade for a hand and a half sword. It could really use better though. It could use to start more like seven to seven and a half millimeters and taper with a more complex taper, you know, drop down to around five around here and then slowly taper out down to two and a half, three. There, there's a lot that could be done there, but this is effective for what it is. It's just not particularly refined. I should also mention it is hollow ground. It's not a deep hollow grind, but it is a hollow ground blade. And the spine is, or the central ridge is very straight and even. Although up towards the tip, it does waver off to the side or rather the edge of the sword is not completely symmetrical. This part right here is tapering in towards, the, the curve towards the tip is a little bit different. Not a big deal, especially at this price point. Looking at, as I was doing that, that brought up something else. If I look at the edge under light, I can see it reflect fairly unevenly. This is not a particularly refined edge. It is one smooth bevel to the, to the, from the uh, center ridge to the edge, but the actual final sharpening is not particularly even. It's a little bit rough. It's a little bit toothy, and it could really use some refinement, probably just um, very high grit or maybe even just a stropping with some stropping compound because it doesn't, from what I can see, doesn't need to be reshaped. It just needs to be polished up and smoothed over. That's still better than a lot of swords in this price range. This is effectively sharp. We'll get to uh, paper cutting and then cutting in a minute or two. But overall, it's a decent blade. The appearance is pretty nice. It's got a satin look to it. It has, again, some errant grind lines here and there, but not a whole lot. The biggest quote-unquote flaw in the blade is that those uh, uneven edges do reflect in the light, and even sometimes when it's not reflecting light, I can see them. But again, budget sword, you have to expect some flaws in it. And if I look down the lengths of the blade, there is definitely some rippling, actually quite a bit of it but it's very shallow rippling. It's not affecting the geometry of the blade at all. This is just surface rippling, so that's perfectly fine. Looking at some paper cutting here. So it was able to start the cut there and bite into the edge. I think I ended up going a little bit too fast there. Let's try that again. Or maybe not. It, it definitely is sharp enough to bite into the paper does look like it starts getting a little bit duller down here, but that's not too bad. That's, you know, I, I would generally cut up around here. So if it gets a little bit duller, a little bit further back, that's not a big deal. Let's try the other edge here. All right, that edge completely failed to bite in. Let me try that again. So this one's the opposite, actually. It's a little bit duller up here a little bit sharper back here. So I didn't know that when I was doing my cutting, you'll see cutting in a little bit. It's very possible that a large amount of my cutting was with a, a part of the sword that was not particularly sharp. This goes back to the what I was saying earlier that the edge is a little bit uneven. It can really benefit from final refinement polishing of the edge. So cutting with the sword, I did very little cutting with it. I just time and weather. It is so damn hot here that it is really hard to find time to do cutting. What little I did was just a very quick impromptu session in my front yard where I got out a low stand and did a few cuts on some water bottles and stuff. This sword cut okay. I was working on, while doing this, I was really working on trying to improve my hip engagement and some of my other form was definitely suffering because I was working on that. But this sword did get some good cuts. It got one on this milk carton in particular that surprised me. This is a paper carton, and I find that swords that are not really well sharpened really struggle on these targets. Usually they 
bash them. They might tear in them a little bit, but it's rare to get a clean cut through these targets unless the sword is quite sharp. So I think I can safely say that I cut with the sharper part of the sword on this target. And it was a good cut. It still did some tearing. It wasn't super clean, but it was one of the cleaner cuts I've had on one of these targets. And right after that, I did a little bit of thrusting on it and on another water bottle. This sword thrusts very well. The, the, the point is quite acute. It is rigid. It is a good thruster, and it's definitely an effective cutter. I think that if I had been in my normal cutting environment in my backyard at that normal height that I cut at, I think I would have gotten considerably better cuts than I did. This sword definitely is capable of de delivering those, and while the edge could be sharpened up a little bit and refined a bit more, it is sharp enough to do backyard cutting, and overall, a fun sword to cut with. Talking about handling here, this is a very fun sword to move around. At 32 inch blade, it's relatively short for a hand and a half sword. The grip is just long enough for me to get both my hands on there. If I wanted to separate them some, I could definitely grip it down a little bit more towards the pommel and let the pommel kind of rest in my hand and use the boss with this pinky to help pivot the sword. I tend to like keeping my hands a little bit closer together than that though. It is, like I said, very rigid. You can see it doesn't have very much flex when I look for the percussion nodes. The blade node is right around there. The hilt node, it's right where you want it, right uh, in the upper part of the grip. We try to flex the sword. There's very little flex to it. And it's most, what little there is is mostly flexing out towards the tip, which is good to see very nice and rigid. That will help it power through cuts if your edge alignment's a little off and will certainly aid in thrusting against harder targets especially. One thing that's really nice about the sword is it delivers a lot of sword wind. Very audible, very easy to generate, but if I do it with the edge alignment off a little bit, it doesn't really generate any. So that's a good uh, way to tell if your edge alignment is on. In addition, since this sword weighs 2 pounds, 12 ounces, it's surprisingly wieldy in one hand. And it actually is, I barely have to put anything into it and I hear sword wind. Even at that slow speed, I'm hearing sl sword wind. I don't want to go full speed because again, I still have a bit of a wrist issue that bothers me when I'm one-handing the sword. So overall, this is a fun sword to move around. It's light. It's nimble. The point is very easy to deliver pretty much exactly where I want it. This is a fun sword to move around. All right, wrapping this review up, a couple of potential improvements that could be done to this sword. The biggest one still with Ronin Katana is the grip. This is a vast improvement over Ronin Katana's normal European style grips but it's still not particularly secure in my hand. A little bit more refinement of the design, flattening out these edges just a little bit while keeping it nice and smooth, I think would do a, would aid in my me being able to grip the sword and have a really secure grip. This is just my opinion on the grip. I bet you there's other people who find it perfect. So just my opinion. I think a little bit more refinement of the overall design a little bit thicker at the base smooth out the distal taper well not even smooth it out make it a little more complex have it lose a good millimeter millimeter and a half in the first six to nine inches and then gentle taper out get it a little bit thinner here just a little bit more refined distal taper would make the sword even more effective and more fun to cut with it's not a big deal because this is effective but it would improve the sword even more Lastly, this is incredibly minor here. More refinement of the edge. This is effectively sharp. It is sharp enough to be a backyard cutter, but I am something of a sharpness snob. I like my swords to be very sharp at a point where they are competition cutting level sharp. I don't really expect to get that out of Ronin Katana or pretty much anybody, but it sure would be nice to be able to do so. Now. That brings me to whether or not I think this sword is worth the price. At $285, it is competing with some other swords that I have 
considered very much worth the price, such as the Hanwei Rhinelander, the Hanshu 15th century Italian longsword, the Hanwei Albrecht II uh, hand and a half sword. I think this sword fits in very well with those. And yes, I do think it is worth the price. I think this is a quite good uh, implementation of a hand and a half sword that could be improved more, but still a fun sword to use, reasonably historic, and effectively sharp. It may not be my favorite in this price range. I think the Hanwei Albrecht still takes that crown, but this is a good sword at a good price. So yes, I do recommend it. And that's going to wrap up this review. I want to say thank you to all of you for watching and continuing to support the channel. Make sure you leave a comment, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, do all that stuff. It really does help. Next review will be back to my normal uh, review style. Until then, Alien 2 out.